fine. And when it comes to property, it's really just about making sure that the property division is just and right or fair. So there's a lot of flexibility and a lot of creative creative things we can do to meet Hi, friends. Welcome to My Divorce Real Estate. I'm Amber Gifford, and this is my husband and teammate, Scotty Gifford. And today we have a special guest with us, uh, Patrick McCallum uh, with Drew McCallum Law Firm here in the Houston area. Hey, Patrick. Thanks for joining us. Oh, I'm so very, very glad to be here. Thank you so much for inviting me. (laughs) Of course. Well, so I was going to touch too on about the biggest asset, which is their home, which is what we're dealing with. Like sometimes they come to you and have probably no clue, or maybe they know they're going to sell it. And, you know, here we come into play like, Hey, let me provide you Patrick with a CMA. And this is what they're looking at. And then I know too past clients they've worked numbers with you and what was the best scenario for them or what they worked with the cda cdfa with you and obviously that's where we come into play too like what does this picture look like because we don't ever pressure anyone to do one thing or the other we just want to show them what it looks like as well yeah. you're not telling them what to do it's like this is what this looks like if you keep the house and can you afford to keep it and if you're going to buy him out that's where scotty comes into play this number looks like this and I think sometimes people don't know about divorce, so it's scary. So they take whatever their attorney says, whether the attorney is suggesting or just saying, this is what we're going to do, which a lot of them do do that. And they're like, okay, sure. And then later they're like, well, wait, I don't want to do that. That's not what I thought about. And when I I like the low drama part where you come into play to be like, kind of like mediator, like, here's what this looks like. You know, it's important, I think, have options to understand which is what we try to provide as well and working with like-minded individuals and colleagues like yourself options are important I don't nobody wants to be told what to do and I think sometimes when you're in a litigation sense that's the only way to go like we're telling you this is what you get in front of a judge they're gonna tell you what to do well yeah a judge has very limited options um yeah. on what the judge can do because the judge can divide the community estate on a just and right or fair basis. That's all the judge can do, which means either the house goes to one spouse or the other or gets sold. Those are the options. In With agreement, we can get way more creative. If, for example, the spouses want to keep the kids in the house until they get out of high school. Okay, well, we can figure out financially, how do we do that to make sure whoever is going to live in the house with the kids is you know can financially afford it and the kids don't have to move. And then we can say, okay, once the youngest is 18 and out of high school, then we want to give the spouse the the, the right of first refusal to buy the other one out and, right. and acquire the house, or we sell it, and then we divide the proceeds and we figure out you know, how they want to do that. But there are a lot of things we can do that are very creative and very beneficial to kids and to spouses as long as we have agreement. If we don't have agreement, it's going to be one of you gets it or it's sold. That's those, those, and, and it, and it happens, you know, then it's not, well, we, we're going to ask the judge to see if we can just, you know, sell it in two years. Court can't, isn't going to yeah, do that. No. <laughs> I have to divide what's in front of me today. That's my job. I have to divide what's in front of me today. And it's not, it's not anybody's preference. You know, the only thing that I tell people they have to do is if I tell you, you have to do something it's because family code says it's not, I say, and it's not court say it's family code says we're all bound to follow the family code. Um, I don't, I don't have the privilege or the burden of, of creating new law. I have to follow what's in front of me. So that's my guidepost is family code. And as long as we're in compliance with family code, then agreements are fine. And when it comes to property, it's really just about making sure that the property division is just and right or fair. So there's a lot of flexibility and a lot of creative, creative things we can do to meet goals, desires, and needs as long as we have agreement. Absolutely. I and then that. and then once I know what your desired outcomes are, then I can help formulate choices and options because I agree with you. Nobody likes to be told what to do. I like to give people choices and options because it's not my divorce. It's their divorce. They're the ones that live with this. Yeah. Once yeah. the decree is signed, I go move on to another case. They have to go live with this. So I want to make sure that they're that they had the voice. They had the say. They're the well, decision. I, I'm not a decision. Key. 
Because I, I know from my own personal experience, I was told things because I didn't know any better. I know better now, but I try to share that information with people like, you're right. No one wants to be told what to do. And you giving them options is that is the benefit of going to low drama coming together. Even if you hate the other person and you want to stick it to them, like you guys still can come together for the peace of your future. Like nobody walks in those shoes, but you, I always try to tell people, Hey, we're, just sit back and take a moment and like go can I live with this and you're like up here because you are giving the options which I would prefer options as well so I I love that piece of it and the benefit of coming to someone like yourself well yeah and that's not something you're going to find you know those types of agreements are not things you're going to typically find on the internet Um, (laughs) that is something you're going to have to have a professional who does this day after day year after year say okay here's what I can with with your desired goals and outcome, here's some of the options I can create and craft that are going to meet family code, are likely to be approved by a court, and are going to meet those needs and and make those goals. And then y'all can choose what works for you. And then, or you can say, I like 80% of this, but I want to tinker with this this way. Um, we can get very custom that way with with agreement. So yeah. nice. I even think like in thinking about this, people who really kind of are contentious but really want the best outcome, like they could probably speak with you individually and then you be the middle person to go, well, I'm thinking he wants this, she wants this. What do y'all think about this? And tell them separately and then come. So maybe they don't have to always be in communication with their soon to be ex. You're that person. But they, I always tell people to, hey, write down your wish list. Like I want all these things and know the things that you're willing to negotiate on. And that's kind of like what they're giving you in a way. Like these are the things I want be creative with it. And then you could be the middle person, which is exactly highly valuable in a divorce. I mean, like I, I wish it could have been that way for my own self for sure. And, and I do do that for, for some of my spouses that do, that, that do have challenges communicating with each other and they, and they're self-aware and they recognize that is, you know, they'll ask me, can I just talk to you? And then you, you know, act as the go between between us. And the answer is yes, I sure can. Sure. That's so as long nice. as everybody's comfortable with that. Yes, I sure can. That's, that's a huge value. Everyone huge. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else? Well, so I guess uh, leading to that quite, that kind of like spins like, well, so you're not building it by the hour. So you're doing a flat fee. How does that, how does that work with time? For, does that extend the time frames when you're doing that? And does that make it, uh, does it add more cost to, to do that or no? No, it doesn't. And the reason it doesn't is because in order for me to manage this, which is part of what I do is I I manage the process and I help people manage the emotions is, is I need you to communicate with me. And the way that I make people comfortable doing that is you're not on the clock when you communicate with me. Um, I need to know when you're struggling. I need to know when you have challenges. I need to know when you're not sure about something. Um, Because if that is left untended to and festers that grows. And so the enemy to agree divorce is fear. Um, And so anytime anybody has fear, I don't want them to feel like they're going to be, they're going to be, they're going to, you know, spend a hundred bucks on an email to me or a hundred bucks on a phone call. They're not going to call me. They're not going to be, I need them to communicate with me. So I have to take that cost and that, and that element out of the business model, out of my business model. Um, in order to do the job that that they want me to do, so nobody's on the clock communicating. Nice. Well, yeah, well, yeah, we appreciate that too because that's one of the things that we, you know, as a lender and as a realtor, we want the client to make sure that they can, when they have this fear, they start, you know, what about this? And they start going off this like, you know, tangent that's not really a real thing. Even this is fear; it's false evidence appearing real. You know, we go, hey, like, let's talk you back off the ledge. Like, we are going to be able to do this. This is how we can get through this problem. This is not unusual. This problem's come up and we've dealt with it before. And this is how we can fix it or address it, right? And move forward and not have to like blow up the whole deal or now we can't do the loan or whatever because of this one issue. We can just, there's workarounds usually 90% of the time. So we just need to make sure you, you can tell us what you're thinking so that we know how to help you. Because if you don't tell us what you're thinking, we we can't, we're not mind readers, right? We don't know what you're thinking. Well, so. and you're right. If they're fearful of being an hourly charge, or if I send this on, they may not say anything. That's very true. Uh-huh. I kind of feel yeah, like and- snack. we're going to save you money. <laughs> <laughs> well, we are. I mean, I professional, mean, that's what professionals do. They actually do save money and time. For sure. Um, 
That's, that's what that's, I feel like we do too. We're going to actually save you money in the long run. Like we're looking at the big picture, like everybody. And that's why we like teaming up with people like you, because we want to be like-minded and save you money. <laughs> well, and, and, <laughs> and part of what I have to do is I have to connect people with the professionals they need. I have to connect them with realtors like y'all or mortgage professionals or, you know, counselors or yeah. whatever it is that that the needs are, because I'm not a real estate expert. I'm not a mortgage expert, but I know who is. And so when they start asking specific questions about those types of things, I refer them out. So what in a lot of in a lot of divorces, what we wind up building is a little bit of a of a team mm -hmm. to handle all of the all of the aspects, all of the issues, and make sure everybody because again, you can't make decisions unless you have information. You want to make informed decisions. You don't want to make a decision about your house and then find out, you know, after you've sold it, oh wow, we could have done something different that would have been way better than this. And mm -hmm. It's too late. You know, it's, yes. you, you want to make informed decisions. You just read our mission statement. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Decisions. Well, thank you. Do you have anything else you want to add? I think it's a lot of good information. I think everyone needs to consider this. Even if you hate your ex, I think you should consider it and at least have a consultation with you and find out about what this entails for them and it, you know if, if anything give it a shot i love that it's another option you're not being told what to do and you can communicate about things without having to be fearful of oh my god this is costing me money i mean it's really it's really a huge value so thank you so much for coming on we appreciate it i appreciate y'all very much thank you so so much for having me of course, like and subscribe, everybody. As always, we're here to bring you real life experiences to all your real estate needs. Boom, boom.